As you know, last weekend was Independence Day weekend, 4th of July. Uh, the reason why I say Independence Day is because many people forget why we even celebrate that holiday. They just think of it, of it, of it as another long weekend. But there was actually, you know, a fight. Can I say that? For our independence. Uh, there was actually things that, that occurred, and we need to remember that. And so I took the opportunity last week uh, to speak to you about being relentless for liberty. In other words, having a passion for freedom. Not just freedom for yourself, but freedom to release other people. Amen? Uh, and we talked about that last week. Uh, and today, uh, what I want to do is continue in that theme for just uh, just this morning, I believe God has laid something uh, very special, a little bit more theatrical uh, than sometimes we do. That's why we have the curtains up and they're setting some things up back there and getting some things ready. Would you stand with me as we read the scripture today? If somebody can get me a water or after, after we read this, then that would be good. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Same scripture that we used last week. And it says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To, he has uh, sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and may God add a blessing to the reading of his word let's pray father I thank you today for your word your word which is all powerful your word literally which was spoken and things which were not came into being. So we thank you for that word, God, and we know that it's sharp, that it's powerful, that it's alive. God, today I don't pray for the word because there's a promise in your word that says that it will not come back void, but it will accomplish the purpose, the agenda that you have sent it to do. But today, Lord, I pray for the hearers of the Word. God, that You would open up our hearts and minds to receive the Word. Lord, that our heart would be fertile ground, God. Our, our heart would be tilled, Lord, in such a way by entering into Your presence that the seed would take root, Lord, that it would uh, fit into the place that You've designed it for in our heart and our mind. God, and that it would germinate in that life would spring forth from it. Today, Lord, I also pray for the giver of the message, the giver of the word. God, that you would bless and that you would anoint. God, I thank you for the anointing. Lord, but most of all, God, I, I thank you that you give utterance. God, and that you give the unctioning power of your Holy Spirit. And today, Holy Spirit, I invite you to just cloak me in your presence. That I would say the things that you would have me to say. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray and everyone said, Amen and Amen. As we look at this thought of being relentless for liberty, and the words that we just read, we said that uh, Jesus uh, used these words essentially as his inaugural address. That as he began his ministry, you know, he didn't stutter, he didn't stammer, but he boldly declared that he had come to set all those who were captive, all those who were oppressed, to set uh, them free. And, and so we, we determined from that, but also from the ministry that Jesus uh, did as he was here on the earth, uh, as he opened blinded eyes, as he uh, caused deaf ears to be uh, able to hear, as he literally 
not just figuratively, raised the dead as he uh, uh, enabled people who had been mute to speak. We were able to determine that Jesus also was relentless for liberty. As a matter of fact, that's why he came, folks. He, he said it in this address that he came uh, to set the captives free. That's good news. Amen. Uh, can you help me preach just a little bit today? I, I need your help. My voice is going away. So you guys have to be loud for me. Is that okay? Uh, so Jesus is relentless for liberty. Uh, that's his passion. Uh, but not only that, Jesus uh, came uh, to liberate everyone who was oppressed. And he called us to that same ministry. Yes, he did. In other words, we are the extension of the ministry of Jesus. Yes. Can, can, can you raise your hand like this and say, God, let me be your hand. Let me be the extension of your ministry. And so that's what God has called us to do. We literally, and I know that we don't get up every day and say, God, help me to be the extension of your ministry. I know that we don't, but imagine if we did. If we started off every day with an agenda to do what God has called us to do. Imagine what we could accomplish with the Spirit of God in our life. Amen? Uh, so we're the extension of Jesus to set the captives free. Yeah. Last week we talked and we said that those who are captive, that that word means prisoners of war. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that touched your heart like it did mine. But when we see people out of this world who don't know Jesus, who've never experienced the cleansing and saving power of Jesus, who've never been filled with the, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, who aren't living lives that are sanctified, I want you to understand that you are seeing a prisoner of war. Yes, that's right. Oh, it might look like they're happy. It might look like uh, they have everything they need, but the enemy has them trapped. The enemy has surrounded them and, and, and encaged them and, and is wanting to keep them uh, far away from God. See, how do we know that we've been called to this type of ministry? Uh, it's easy for me to say, oh, God's called us to do the same thing. But I want to back it up with the scripture. John 4.12 tells us this. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. How many believers do I have here today? Uh, yeah, you're, so you're identifying yourself. Uh, the works that I do, He will do also. That's pretty cool to think that we're going to do the same works that Jesus does. Amen? But it goes on to say that even greater works than these shall He do because I go to the Father. What is He saying? He's saying that when I go, when Jesus went to the Father, that the Holy Spirit came down. And that when we receive that in, it's like plugging into a power source. It allows us and equips us and gives us the authority and the power that we need to accomplish the work of God. Now I'm preaching good. Can you just help me out today, folks? Uh, it, it accomplishes things in us that we could not do on our own. Amen? Uh, so we, too, are called... To be relentless for liberty. Now I know you can't see uh, what the screen says, so uh, just 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 hear me out. The, this is a key point. We are also called to be relentless for liberty. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, "Get at it." Get yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and today, what I want to talk about there actually there are five groups, but we're going to talk about four of those groups that we are called to help set free. Uh, those four groups that are identified there, and you may actually see yourself in one of those. Now what do I mean by that? You too may have been set free. You may have been liberated in one of these areas. And guess what? Because you were liberated in that area, God has a special call on you to help liberate others in that same. Who have been through the same thing. You know what I'm talking about? How many knows that when you experience something that you can speak into people's lives? Yes. Amen? 
Uh, when you've been through it, nobody wants to hear you say, I know what you mean, sister. I know what you mean, brother, when they don't know what you mean. You know what I'm saying? But when you've experienced the life-changing power of God setting you free, uh, it is so uh, powerful. As a matter of fact, even the very definition of evangelism, one person said it this way, that, that uh, evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar where they found bread. What does that say? We're called to help one another, right? Yes. We're called to help one another. Uh, so what's the first group? Jesus came to liberate those who uh, were poor. Now, we look at the word poor in many different ways in this country. Can I tell you there are not as many poor people as the government would like you to think there are? Amen. Can I, can I give an amen? Amen. I'll, I'll qualify that. Uh, the, here it says, how are we going to liberate the poor? How, how will we do that? Preach the gospel. Oh, yeah. oh man, you missed a good opportunity to say amen. Yes. How do you liberate the poor? Not by giving them everything. Yeah. Not by uh, 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 writing every check for them. You liberate the poor by preaching the gospel. Oh, amen. Amen. You see, there is something liberating about the power of the gospel message. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Uh, there, there's something that, that sets free, that breaks a, a chains, that, that, that sets us free is the preaching of the gospel. Why? Because it's truth. Can I get an amen? amen? It's good news. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Set you free. Uh, and a little bit later on, in the same chapter in John, chapter 8, verse 36, He says, if the Son set you free, then you are free indeed. You don't just think you're free. You're free indeed. You have been released you have been, uh, uh, the, the captivity has been broken off of you. And so, who are we called to help? Those who are genuinely poor. What do I mean by genuinely poor? Those who are oppressed financially. Those who don't have the means to go and buy food. I, I know that's distracting. You can hear things going on back there, okay? Look at your neighbor and say focus. We used that word last week. Focus right here, okay? Um, those who are oppressed financially. And we're called though, to those who don't have a means to help themselves, who are hungry, those who don't have shelter. Now, what I want you to understand, when it says the poor, it is not a blanket statement. It is not every person that comes to you and says, I need a help. I need a handout. It, it's not that. Uh, now, I know that you might think, Pastor Van, you're just sounding kind of harsh and cruel today, but I want you to understand that it is not a blanket command to help everyone who comes to you and says they need a hand. Uh, it, we are not commanded to help those who are lazy. Man, you missed a good time to say amen. If you are working, you really missed a good time to say amen. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, Proverbs 10, 4 says it like this, that uh, we're not to, those who are slothful or lazy, who could work but, but won't. Uh, uh, Proverbs 10, 4 says, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Man, it seems like we need a lesson in this United States about how to obtain wealth. Amen. Wow. Work hard. Look at your neighbor say, work hard. Amen. Work hard. Work hard. And your parents missed a good time to tell your kids that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, can I tell you this also? It is also not a command to help those uh, who just want to waste their money. Right. Have you ever met somebody who spent their money on everything else and then they wanted you to help them pay the light bill? Amen. They wanted you to help them. Now, now see, I, please, be, please be careful. Make sure you understand. I'm not saying we don't ever help anyone like that. It needs to be a real need. A felt need. Can, I, can, can, can we get there? Now, I'm, I'm going to quantify. I want you to understand that I am compassionate. And that we need to be compassionate. Okay? Yes, and we need to help people who are poor. 
But we also are called to be diligent with the what God has given to us. Amen? Yes. Can I get amen? Amen. All right? Hopefully I'm not making anybody mad today. All right? Uh, I, I don't think I am. Uh, so we're called to help those who are genuinely poor, not just living life however they want to. Uh, Thessalonians, uh, first, second Thessalonians 3.10 uh, says that if any would not work, that neither should he eat. Well, don't look at me like that. That's what the word says, not me. Amen. Amen. Um, but God does command us to help those who are poor beyond their own control. Can I get an amen? amen? People who by no fault of their own have come through calamity, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. who've come through affliction, who've come through tragedies, and because of those, they are at a disadvantage. We are called to help those kind of people. Amen? amen. We're called to have the compassion of God. And how many knows that there are many people who just need a hand up one time? Right. Amen? amen. And, and so we are called to be like the Good Samaritan and to bind up and to help up and to take care of those uh, that, that truly need a hand. We're called uh, to do this through the gospel message. Yes. Amen? Yes. Through the gospel message, we're called to do that. Now, I want to give you a, a term uh, or a phrase that you may not have ever heard. But the gospel message... Is one of redemption. How I many knows what redeem means? Yeah. 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 And lift. The gospel, not life. We'll put that in there, put it in wrong. The gospel message is one of redemption and lift. What does that mean? How many of you have ever seen somebody get saved and there was a tremendous transformation in their life? Yeah. I mean, suddenly. Rather uh, than having addictions in their life, rather than all kinds of uh, problems and issues in their life, then things begin to drastically change. Yes. You see, when you get things right with God, things begin to turn around. Amen. 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 That's the truth. How I many have you ever seen somebody, whether they were an alcoholic or a drug addict or whatever it might be, that when they give the truly give their heart to God, that things begin to change? Amen. Amen. And this redemption and lift, what does it mean? As people begin to turn their life more and more completely over to God, things begin to change. Suddenly, if they're not spending money on alcohol, if they're not spending money on riotous living, then guess what? They have enough money to buy some groceries. To put some clothes on the kids' back. Amen. To pay the rent. Amen? Yeah. Uh, and, and so they begin to lift, and it's through the gospel message. I want you to understand that the gospel message does more than just say. Oh, it's the most wonderful thing that it does. But it does more than say, it begins to lift us yes. and transform uh, our lives. Uh, so, uh, you, you, we must understand that. You see, it happens in an even further way when we begin to do things like give offering and pay time. Look at your neighbor say, I know it's going to go there. <laughs> right? Good preaching. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? Because tithing and offering causes us to gain a discipline with the money that we have left over that we would have never had before. Amen. It, it causes us to gain a, a, a discipline that will help us with the other 90 or so percent that we have left over. Amen. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it teaches us and it gets ingrained in us and we, suddenly we get smarter. Look, you never say you might need that. <laughs> All right, I'm be, I gotta be, I gotta be hanging. Uh, you see, when we learn to do right by God, He always does right by us. Amen. Uh, secondly, we're called to be relentless, the broken hearted. Jesus, as He read from Isaiah, said, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal." The broken hearted. The broken hearted. Down and out. Entrapped. 
caged in? How do they become brokenhearted? Who are the brokenhearted? Those who are oppressed relationally. Yes. Those who have been damaged by relationships. They've been betrayed. They've been deceived. Uh, personal failures have gone on either in their lives or people connected to them. Uh, there's been false accusations. There's been uh, unforgiveness. There's been bitterness. There's been strife. There's been grief, maybe even death. Those people are the ones who are brokenhearted. And it's usually associated with relationships. Uh, a mother or father. It may be a child who... Uh, who wouldn't listen to you. It may be a child who didn't appreciate what you had done for them. Uh, uh, adults, it may be a spouse who stepped out on you and broke your heart or been unfaithful to you. Do you understand what I mean by the brokenhearted? And we are called uh, to release and to set free uh, the brokenhearted. Yeah. You know, there are all kinds of things that can break your heart. Can I get an amen? amen. But God has a plan of reconciliation of repair and restoration that God has put upon us to help and to set other people free. So God calls for us to reach out and to heal those who are brokenhearted. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 61, it says that uh, Jesus, uh, that the Lord, I mean, uh, was to bind, the, bind up the brokenhearted. What does that mean? Bind up. It means, uh, let me give you the definition of, of really what that means in that scripture. It means to wrap up, to embrace. How many knows that sometimes that when you're broken hearted, you just need somebody to give you a big hug. You just need somebody to wrap their arms and a love around you. You just need somebody to hug you up and tell you it's going to be all right. I know where you're at. I know where you're struggling. I know where you have problems. But I want you to know. And, and you, like, can I just say this? It's not as simple as just saying a prayer and everything goes okay. Do you understand that? You know, you've been there yourself. But we are called to come along beside. We are called uh, to comfort and to be there day by day and, and, and to lift up and, and to encourage and to, uh, I'm a preaching good today, you know what I'm saying? We're called to come alongside those who are broken hearted. You see, um, it's a word that means that it's a process of healing. I mean, knows it's a process of healing. Yeah. Um, that, that we're called to bind up the wounds that seem irreparable. Yes. How many of you have ever felt like you just never get over something? Yes. Yes. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. through a good Christian friend, yes. you begin to get release from that. So there's power in setting free over those who are brokenhearted. Amen. The third thing that I want to talk about today, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. Come on. Recovery of sight to the blind. What is that talking about? It's talking about people who are in physical problems. People who have disease. Yes. People who have sickness. Uh, and, and there's a release from that. Uh, those who are oppressed physically through sickness or disease, whether it be heart disease or cancer or high blood pressure or sugar diabetes, I want you to understand that Christ has come to set you free. Can I give an amen? I don't care what kind of disease it is. Uh, the Lord said to us that He has given us authority and power over every disease. Uh, can I get an amen? amen. Uh, I think we need to understand that too many times we send somebody to the doctor, don't ever think to pray, don't ever think to take charge of that because sometimes uh, we can release those people from those situations. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. And, and so we're called to release those and we're to proclaim it. How do we do that? We're to proclaim the good news that Christ has liberated them yes. through divine healing. He has already done it. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. It says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. Wow. 
Uh, Psalm 103, verse 3 says, It is the Lord who heals all, say all, all, all our diseases. So when Jesus, uh, I want to advance forward into the New Testament, when Jesus was going about doing he, His ministry, and people began to bring the sick to Him. And in Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 40, it tells us that uh, He healed all, say it again, all. all that were sick. How is that possible that Jesus did that? Isaiah 53, 3, prophesied by Isaiah hundreds of years ahead of time. It says, by His wounds we are healed. Amen. Are. But by inspiration of the power uh, of the gospel, by inspiration uh, of the Holy Spirit, Peter said it like this By his wounds you have been healed. What does that mean? Look at your neighbor say, That's past tense. It's already happened, it's already been paid for. You already have been healed uh, by the Spirit of God. Uh, and, and we need to let people, we need to proclaim that good news. You know, there are people walking around that have disease and sickness that we just need to tell them that Christ has already paid the price. Amen? Right. Uh, and, and so uh, we, need, we need to understand that. And finally, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. Yes. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Who are the captives? Those who are spiritually oppressed. Yes. Now, I'm trying to hurry through. I know these kids got to be getting tired sitting in these cages. <laughs> Those who are spiritually oppressed. Those who are in a prison from sin. Those who have life-controlling addictions. Those who may be experiencing generational curses. Those who have been involved in occult activity. Those who have experienced spiritual warfare. Those who are under demonic strongholds of the enemy. Christ has come to set the captive free. I want you to understand that that particular thing is not something that you can call the doctor and say, I need a prescription for. It's not something that you can go to the financial institution and say, I need help paying my bills. It's not even something that you can go to the counselor for and say that I need help putting my marriage back together. But it is something spiritual and it has to have a spiritual solution. I want you to know that we have the solution and that solution is Jesus Christ. That solution will set them free uh, from the cap being captive, being prisoners of war. Amen. Wow. Look at them. Trying to break free. <laughs> Trying to break free. What will set them free? The blood of Jesus. Amen. What will set them free is when we begin to do what God has called us to do. Amen. So if you're here today and you are bound by something, help me, Pastor. Wow. If you're bound by something, some kind of life-controlling issue. If you're dealing with spiritual oppression, if you feel like that you are a prisoner, Christ can set you free. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. As I was praying the other day and I began to think about this, I saw a cage. But then God throughout the week began to help me to understand that we're not all in one big cage. That there are separate things. There are different things that we're held captive by. Uh, it might be uh, financial oppression. It might be physical oppression. It might be uh, 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 things that we need uh, besides that spiritual oppression. But we're not all in the same cage. But Christ has come to set us free. How do we help do that? God has given us as believers authority over spiritual enemies. Can I get an amen? amen? To cast out devils, to pull down strongholds, to deliver people from the chains of hell. Yes. And it requires us to exercise the authority that God has already given to us. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. Wow. Are you getting it today? Amen. Christ has given us his word. Uh, we have the power of intercessory prayer and fasting. And we have the ability to plead the blood of Jesus Christ in order to set the captive free. You see, this is not something that's taught in a lot of churches. But we, look at your neighbor and say, we have that authority. We have that authority. We have that kind of authority. We're not weak. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not weak. We're not weak. God has given us the ability uh, to set the captive free and, and to defeat the enemy. We have the ability to defeat the works of the devil. Amen? We have that. Uh, and if you're here today and you're held captive by anything, uh, I want you to understand that you can be set free from those bondages and oppressions, no matter what it, it might be. 2 Corinthians 10, 34, hear this, listen to this. Says it like this, for though we walk in the flesh, we well, understand that these are not things that we just accomplish in the flesh. Yes. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down yes. the stronghold. Amen. Amen. Mighty through God. You see, it doesn't matter what the enemy tried to put on you. I don't care if it's financial oppression. You can be set free. Right. It, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a broken heart. Set free. Come on. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Whether you're blind or physically tormented. By the authority that Jesus has given to us. It doesn't matter what kind of chains spiritually you may have on you. You're set free. Amen. Christ has come to set you free. You don't need those. Set us 